welcome back to Uncle Mo's Garage. Uh, doing something a little different today. Uh, the golf's on hold, the golf fire's on hold for a little bit. Uh, I had a little incident with my daily driver and I wrecked it. Uh, I'll show you maybe a little video clip on, on, on the car I had. So it was a 2013 Golf. I had an accident. I uh, rear-ended somebody and uh, the car became a total loss. So the GTI is gone. I need a daily driver for the week or two until the Turag is done because the Turag is in the body shop right now. Uh, this behind me is my 1978 Volkswagen Rabbit. <laughs> I'm gonna go over the car a little bit, just show you guys what uh, what I've done to it. Uh, let's, uh, let's turn around and I'll show you guys. All right, here we go. This is my 78 Rabbit. Uh, it is, uh, it used to be my brother's Rabbit. He purchased it from the original owners. Uh, did some work on it. It's, it's in really rough shape, the body is at least. Mechanically, uh, we are good. Um, I ended up uh, swapping this thing with a Scirocco 16 valve motor. Uh, had a mild rebuild on it. It's in really, really rough shape um so we got a bunch of rust this is going to be one of the cars we're probably going to build on the channel a little bit later we got a bunch of rust uh, patch panels we got to do i have a lot of them a lot of them i have to make uh but like i said it's got the old uh we put the shirako one steering wheel in here we got the mark one cluster uh that's fully working i got a few little more pinouts to do uh the seats that are in it are the original 78 um the dash is original it's got some cracks in it um just a few little things i might have to do is like touch ups and try to fix them up i have a set of euro bumpers that i'm going to be putting on the card that are back there uh they're different than the american ones this is the 78 american bumper so we're going to swap that out they're plastic euros we'll put those on uh the car is sitting on some raceland coilovers uh and these are the corrado sibring wheels uh these i ran for a while uh, they were just something I found and I threw some tires on it, but the profile is just too small, especially I'm going to start driving this in the city just to uh, be able to get me to work and stuff. But uh, going in on the engine, <laughs> we had uh, with the original motor that was in the car, uh, my brother had a fire. <laughs> he drove one day and uh, the thing, he parked it in front of the garage and then he comes back and the whole thing's in flames. So uh, fuel lines ruptured on it. Uh, I'll show you the, the motor we ended up swapping in it. So this is a 16 valve uh, Scirocco motor. It came out of a 87 uh, Scirocco. Uh, it had about 100 and, it was 120 or 140,000 miles. I ended up going through this a few years back, uh, replaced the head gasket, did the timing belt, uh, water pump, uh, tensioner, all the seals and gaskets complete. Um, uh, brand new spark plugs, coil, uh, uh, spark plug wires, uh, distributor is the same. I haven't really done it except for just a cap and rotor. Uh, transmission that's in is a 16 valve uh, transmission. I'm not sure what the, the the code number is, but it's out of a 16 valve Scirocco. Uh, so this car was originally a three speed automatic and we converted it to a five speed manual. Uh, it's still got some bugs in it. Uh, it's fun to drive. It's something really cheap that we did. Uh, I got to do a few little maintenance things on it uh, to be able to get it back on the road because I have to get, uh, I need a car to just cruise around for the summer at least for a couple of weeks or something until the uh, Scirocco, sorry, the Touareg is done and stuff. So this would be something fun I could just enjoy. This is a project I had parked away for a while. Uh, still starts, <laughs> barely got it into gear to get it in the garage because it's been so rusty and everything just sitting there for about a year and a half or so since I drove it around. I had some issues with charging issues on the alternator. Uh, my problem was the circuit board that is inside the, uh, inside the gauge cluster of the, of this, uh, the dual pod, uh, the circuit board is kind of like this guy right down here. So that circuit board in the back was all toast. I found the guy on eBay that uh, remanufactures them and I was able to replace it. So I was able to get the charging issues done. There's probably a couple of pinouts I still got to fix. Um, like I said, I got to go through uh, and just uh, do a couple of things. So I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to swap out the wheels. Uh, these are the wheels I'm going to be putting on. Uh, these are 
OZ uh, Fiti Palidis, bro. At least that, I think that's how you, Palidi? I think it's Palidi, it makes sense. Fiti Palidi, Paladi, Paladi. You know, it's the Italians. So <laughs> they're uh, 15 by seven and they're a 26 offset. So I'm curious to see if these are gonna fit. I mean, I got them, I just mounted the balance the tires on. They're 195, 50, 15. Uh, they got a little stretch on them, not much. Uh, I think they're gonna fit fine in the back. The back have a lot more clearance. You know, there's plenty of room back there. Uh, the fronts, I don't know about the fronts. I'll be honest with you. I think we're gonna take the old hammer and just <laughs> hammer this flat over here, at least the lip. These fenders are trashed. Uh, the car's got some rust. I did, uh, I did an engine uh, bay shave on here a few years back. Just in um, my friend's garage, he let me use it. So I went through, originally I was gonna paint the car black. Uh, this one, we might do some other stuff with it. I think we're gonna go white on this baby. So um, this belongs to my brother originally. He, uh, he got married and uh, he had nowhere to store the rabbit. So I ended up telling him, um, you know, he's, he said, he's like, I gotta sell the car, man. I was like, I, I, don't have, I don't have any room for it. He's like, I, know, I got nowhere to store it. And I said, you know what, hey, just don't sell it. He's like, I can't, I gotta sell it, I gotta sell it. So I said, all right, listen, Whatever you got to do is like, tell me how much you want for it, you know? So whatever he gave me, uh, he's like a thousand bucks. I was like, all right, thousand bucks. He gave me the rabbit itself with a 16 valve motor, which was completely trashed at the time. Uh, it was, had a blown head gasket. He pulled that out of a uh, Scirocco. And then uh, it just, he had parts and pieces. I did a rear uh, front disc brake conversion on it. Uh, they're kind of rusty. They're brand new, but they are rusty. They've sat for so long um i they just ride it out man so i'm gonna have to drive it around hopefully the brakes still work we'll find out what to try to break them down uh, you know try to break them in and i did a disc brake conversion it's kind of hard to see but uh do i have a rear disc brakes on the 16 valve on, uh, from the 16 valve on here so there are 10 and a half in the front and i think these are eights or nine and a half i can't remember in the back so this was uh one of the rabbits i I originally was getting ready to restore and stuff and then I, I didn't have a garage at the time so then I stopped completely after I did the swap and then it just sat there and I felt so bad so this is the baby you know the, this is what uh, I wanted to build for the longest time this is my favorite VW I love the rabbit it's uh it's one of the coolest cars I think for for VW that ever came out with you know people like their Beatles and you got you got Volkswagen guys that like their Mark One rabbits, and for me this is cool. I mean, this thing is tiny. Like, look at the, look at the size comparison between the Golf R, and the here and the Rabbit. <laughs> it's just massive here. But here's the, here's the Rabbit size. <laughs> it's between the Rabbit. I mean, you could hug this thing. The Rabbit itself. You, it's so small. You could just hug this car. It's so tiny. I love it. Uh, it's a really fun car to drive if you've never driven a Mark 1. Uh, it feels like an oversized go-kart. Uh, they weigh, I think this one weighs about 1,600 pounds or so. And then uh, the motor that's in it is 127, 130 horsepower, uh, 16 valve. So that uh, in this car is like having a car with like 100 and, you know, 170, 190 horsepower. You know, it just feels like an oversized go-kart. But it's just cool. I mean the the mark one is is such a cool car i i i really like it some people you know think it's kind of weird and stuff but you know what uh it's cool i mean if you ever want to feel what it what it's like to drive an old school car man i mean this this is the car i mean for for me i when i drove this car all i did is it, it put smiles on my face i was laughing so hard when i drove it i was like dude there's no way that this car was made you know <laughs> Uh, whatever it's almost it's 50 50 years old now 50 something years old what is it uh yeah i think 50 yeah so it's getting there man it's just it's it's such a cool car man so i'm gonna do a couple of stuff on it we'll try to fit these wheels on see if they fit because uh if they don't we're gonna be hammering in these fenders a little bit because like i said when we go through the rabbit we're gonna swap out the fenders uh I gotta do all the rockers on the bottom. The rockers are all rotted out. That's the fender itself. The rockers are all rotted out. The floors are pretty solid. The, 
quarter panels this is typical rust for for the rabbits and stuff this is very typical this too then on the rear panel back here around the exhaust you got under there after the golf is out of the garage we'll be working on this so as you can see so the guy the originally uh he the original owner went through and he started uh trying to uh, do some he did he did a paint job on it i mean it wasn't a great one but he did better than this you know so it was all covered he, he hit all the rust and stuff pretty well and uh now i think uh this rabbit deserves a full restoration especially it being a 78 and stuff so uh it's pretty cool like i said uh super excited hope to uh get this rabbit going and uh cruise it around a little bit but that's uh that's the project we're going to be doing on on this episode and stuff uh just something small uh something kind of cool we we'll have to look over i need to make sure that this thing is road worthy because <laughs> it's been a while since i drove this thing and i had uh like i said the charging issues with the alternator and then um uh, so like i said i'm just gonna go through i'm gonna let this thing dry off because it's uh sat in the rain for the last two years and uh now it's it's time to show it some love <laughs> so uh everybody just uh sit back watch and uh you know relax enjoy the video and stuff and uh we'll get the rabbit going try to do a small little oil change on it get these wheels on and then we got to go through like i said go through the car and make sure everything's good gotta remember to replace the wiper blades bro <laughs> so they are <laughs> They were brand new. I mean, I had I had new wiper blades on here uh, two years ago. <laughs> oh man, this poor bunny, dude. I feel I feel terrible for neglecting and stuff. It's just such a cool car, man. And uh, I hope to get it running at least enjoy it this summer and stuff. And then uh, hopefully over the winter, get started on on fixing this body up and try to get it back to its uh, its glory days, man. I mean, because like like I said, the rab is just sweet. I mean, check this out here. So. Oh, I sit in the rabbit. So look how thin the doors are. <laughs> you can pinch them with your hand. So this is the view of the rabbit. I mean, you got a, your whole windshield is just huge, you know, going all the way through. Look at this. It's just glass everywhere, you know. You look around, you know, the mirrors are super tiny, you know, like this one too. I, I have new mirrors I'm going to put on here. They're kind of loose. So the cool thing is when you drive really fast, you know, this wheel, this mirror goes boom. <laughs> And I've had it happen where, you know, you when you, you're driving 70 miles an hour or 60 miles an hour on the highway and it goes, boom, it just folds in. Yeah, so we got to, I got to replace them. I have a set that I bought. Just there's some cheapo uh, repo ones. So, uh, but yeah, this is the, this is the rabbit itself. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a sweet car, man. I mean, it's so much fun. It's so simple. You just, you know, start the car, go, gas, brake, you know, clutch and, and that's it, man. I mean you're no i don't have a radio in it or anything but you know what i i feel like this car is just meant to enjoy and drive and uh like i said it's it needs some work some love and stuff but uh i mean the mark one is just once you got it running it's awesome so like i said uh i'm gonna get through uh do some stuff on it and uh hopefully uh get this thing on the road and try to try to cruise this thing to work and enjoy it you know for at least some of the summer at least over a couple of weeks or something until the uh until I get the Turag back from the shop and then I got to get it all inspected and stuff. But like I said, well, that's uh, that's my project that's coming up. And uh, like I said, here we go. Here goes the rabbit, Mark 1 on Uncle Mo's garage. Uh, something, like I said, I wanted to do for a while. I have another one, but this is the one that's the closest to being on the road. Um, this one is going to be uh, the kind that you just go in and it's all original. You just drive, you know, enjoy it and stuff. So this will be the next one we're going to build. So I hope uh, hope you guys like it. And uh, like I said, like, subscribe, and uh, keep watching. And uh, here we go on the rabbit, all right? Thanks a lot. I'm gonna be robbed in the heart.
Oh my gosh, they're so fat. Oh, they're too fat, man. Look. <laughs> they're too fat. I gotta raise the car up, like, a lot. I think if I raise them up, I might be able to run them like that. I mean, shoot, but the offset is so messed up. All right, let's see what we're gonna go. <laughs> That's what we're up against, though. I mean, oh, if I raise the coils up, I probably could raise the, the car all the way up and maybe we'll be okay. But this is way too low, man. Oh my gosh, that's not gonna work. Okay. <laughs> well, might as well do the rest of them. There's the, there's the, the back end. Here, let me see real quick. Let's take, let's take you guys off and bring you guys for a walk real quick. All right, so, all right, so the back one, we got plenty of room. That's, that's actually where we want to be. That means I got to raise the front up a lot. Another like inch and a, inch and a half almost to be able to clear this. So. If I do that, I might be able to clear this and then I could probably pound in the lip of the fender a little bit and that might actually give me the space that I need. So, <laughs> just so you know, these came off of an E30 uh, BMW. Uh, they were like uh, an aftermarket brand, uh, an aftermarket like wheel that a lot of people put back on in the 80s. So, uh, I have yet to see them on a rabbit. Uh, at least in this offset but man this is beef though i don't know what i'm gonna do with here i mean it's a good size tire good for the city but uh i definitely gotta raise this thing up dude because this thing is too slammed so that's uh that's the rabbit on sorry on the wheels on this side so let's go ahead let's do the other side now Oh, see so this guy's a little bit higher so we could raise this up probably another half an inch or so give me a little more clearance 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 so that one's good in the back i think the backs are good like i said see that's good an inch and a half i could live with that and then let's see oh, okay 
The fronts are... <laughs> the fronts are gonna touch for sure. Oh, it's so stiff. I think we're almost bottomed out on the strut. So, that's where we stand. <laughs> These are just a set of wheels that I had purchased a few years back, hoping I could use them because the size, the 15 by 7. But uh, they are definitely way too low. Way, way, way too low. So I think if we raise the rabbit up a little bit, we might be able to might be able to do something with them. So there we go. That's actually not bad. I actually like the look of them. All right, so I'm gonna end up taking up the front bumper now. So I just wanted to mock it up real quick and see. So these are the turn signals we're gonna put on. They're smoked. So they're uh, they're aftermarket of course, because uh, you can't find the originals and not the cheap. So I have to figure out how to put these on because it's my first time working on the Mark I. I'll be on the Mark uh, And any of this fancy stuff, because I never got this far. <laughs> I never got this far in the rabbit. I mean, it's uh like I said for for me it's 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 something I really wanted to work on and I I haven't I haven't gotten to that point man and this is it I'm finally uh finally getting there man and uh this is this is cool and it's it's by a by an unfortunate event that it happened you know by wrecking the golf and stuff in GCI. but I mean in the end, dude, this is pretty cool. I'm getting, uh, oh, there's no bulb. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Man, they really rip you off. Now I gotta go buy bulbs. Oh, that sucks. Look at No freaking bulb. I don't know what kind of bulb those in here. <laughs> gotta do some research on life. Oh, man. Oh, crap. So, it looks like it rolled back into the 1980s. <laughs> it's got the, the 80s wheels. It's got the Euro bumpers on it and stuff. Um, we got to still raise up the car. We got to do um, some adjustment on the coilovers. I got the, the Euro bumper in the back too. Uh, so, that one's on too. Um, I, like I said, I don't have to touch the backs. I don't have to raise them up. They're pretty good, pretty high. I think I'm gonna raise, I have to raise the front though. The front is sagging really, really bad. So that's with the, the wheels on this side. And uh, that's it. I mean, uh, the Euro bumper in front, that's what it looks like with the single tail, uh, single headlights on the 78. I got the smoked uh, turn signals. I gotta get some bulbs for those. 
I got to do a little wiring because uh, they're not typical. I had originally removed these uh, side markers. Uh, there's a harness inside that um, has to plug in right here. So like right here we got, uh, this, is the, this is the plug here. It's supposed to give power to the side markers. Uh, I guess one is a, a, a permanent uh, light on. And then the other is the turn signal. So I got to see, I have to do a test. But here's my harness for the um, for the turn signals. One's a ground and then there's a the signal wire. So I have to find out which one it is. I have to repin it because uh, right now they're both uh, spade connectors right here. So I got to change them out and, um, and get a, a different connector on there and then ground it out. Same with this one right here. So I have, there you go. That's the ground right there. And then um, this is this is the turn signal wire, and then right here is my plug here. Like I said, uh, this one had the side marker too, but we shaved everything out, so these aren't working. Eventually, this fender is going to be shaved holes, and then so is this back side marker here. This one's going to get shaved out too. Uh, that'll get patched in, so it'll be nice and smooth like they are in Europe. Finished it off camera. We got the turn signals all wired in. The headlights are all wired back in. Uh, we went through and uh, I had to do some uh, some wiring here with uh, these little these little spade connectors. I shrink wrapped them. This is the factory plug, so I just ended up shrink wrapping all of them. And then uh, we did our terminal grounds. I was gonna screw this a uh, new like tap in there, but I ended up cleaning the terminals up. I kind of like over here too. So see that's the grounding points right there. So I just cleaned up the terminals and they're okay now. And then, like I said, here's the, the turn signal wires. And the, uh, I ended up adding a driving light in, in here. So there's a small little driving light in the Euro headlights. Well, these are aftermarket, but uh, I have, uh, these aren't Xenon or HID. They are actually LED. So here's my bulbs. They're, they're a really good quality. I'm not sure what brand they are. I'm sure I have the box somewhere, but um, I ended up uh, buying these a long time ago and they lasted for a really long time in the Revit and they're pretty pretty good build quality so I ended up putting those in I'm gonna turn on the turn signals and the lights now so you guys can see what we're talking about so here is here's our uh, I ended up doing uh, the driving lights so these ones are out like I said they're gonna be shaved off so I put yellow driving lights in there those are LED bulbs that are inside i think they're gonna look pretty cool that's uh you know something a little different when you turn on the headlights you're not even gonna see them but that looks kind of cool i think uh it's a good uh it looks almost like a fog light <laughs> and then uh let's go ahead and we'll turn on the uh, the headlights in full position all right so these are the headlights here so i'm gonna hit the I'm gonna hit the light off real quick so you can see how they look all right so you can see there's still the little yellow of hint inside there from the LED driving light, but you can see that's pretty bright. And then uh, they actually have a really nice cutoff. They almost look like HIDs. So the nice thing about these is these are H4s. Uh, they're double filament, so there's a high beam too. So here you go. There's the high beam, low beam, high beam. And these, uh, they got a nice cutoff, so they're pretty nice on the road actually. Not too bad. And then we did the turn signals. So let's actually, I'm going to hit the... Hit the hazard light on. That's that switch has got to get fixed. Oh, you heard that buzz? That's not good. All right, so here it's old school. So here we go. Fog lights all work. Now I got lights in the car. Finally done, which is great. So um, I ended up changing the oil on the rabbit. So rabbit's all changed. Changed all the fluids. Uh, I adjusted the shifter linkage. It's still not where I want it to be. I have to still, um, I still gotta do something. Um, either I'm gonna get a new shifter box because I think the shift knob that's in here is from uh, from a, uh, a Scirocco. So I'm gonna swap this thing out. Let me shut this thing up and turn off all the lights and everything. So I'll do that. I have the gauge cluster apart. Uh, I think everything's okay. I'm gonna go through and just check all my wiring and all this stuff. I have a few extra wires that are left over from uh, the automatic car. And then uh, we switched out to a 14 pin. This used to be a 12 pin. 
because that's what the, the dual pod is. That's a single pod over there. And then, um, so I'm just going through some of the wiring. I want to see some stuff. I still don't have a horn and I don't have reverse lights. So I need to check terminals on that and find out why. But I do have brake lights, so it just won't see me backing up. That's the only thing. But uh, I'm going to keep moving on the rabbit and then hopefully get done with it.